So it's that time of year again, yes. It's that time of year when Brady makes us do silly things related to Easter, often uh, involving doing ridiculous things to eggs. But uh, I thought I'd try and do something of a slightly more astronomical nature, and in particular try and find a deep sky object that has something to do with Easter. It's a nebula with every single name, as far as I can make out, but there is, you will not be terribly surprised to hear, an object called the Egg Nebula, uh, which I didn't actually know that much about, but having now looked into it, it's a truly fascinating object. So here's a picture of the Egg Nebula. This is a beautiful picture that the Hubble Space Telescope took. It's actually a star. You can't see the star itself. The star is right hidden in the middle here. There's a big dusty disk around it, so you don't get to see the star itself. But you get to see all these weird things going on around it. This is a star that's at the very end of its life. It's a thing called a pre-planetary nebula, so it's going to turn into a planetary nebula in the not-too-distant future, and we're just seeing the last sort of uh, gasp of this star. It's a star right on the edge of reaching the end of its life. That doesn't look like an egg. It really doesn't, and actually when I looked at this picture, I thought, why on earth is this thing called the egg nebula? And I actually then went and looked back through the, the literature to try and find the original paper, to try and find out where it was first called the Egg Nebula and why they called it that. So I actually found this paper from uh, 1975, Ney et al. He actually shows the early picture of this thing, which actually then, so this is the, the negative image that astronomers often show, so the dark things are actually the things that are light. So here's this two lobe structure we saw before, and actually looking at it like this, you really can see why he ended up calling it the Egg Nebula. Slightly strange egg, because it seems to have a couple of ears on the top of it, but it really is remarkably egg-shaped, and even this one down here looks a little bit like an egg as well. Again, the classic thing, right, that often these things look like one thing when you look at them at relatively low resolution, so there's lots of nebulae that have names where when you see a slightly blurry picture of it, you can convince itself it's a particular object, but when you get much better data of it on it, you sort of start asking, well, why on earth did they call it that in the first place? What he actually said here when he was uh, describing this thing is he said, uh, a popular summary of the early studies of subjects has been published by Ney, that's him, 1975, who, with some artistic license, christened it the Egg Nebula. So even now, people are trying to model this thing and are struggling a bit to understand all the details of what's going on. But what seems to be happening is there's this star in the middle, there's a disk around it, it's pulsating, it's right at the end of its life, so it's kind of pulsating, and every time it pulsates it throws another layer of its outer, outer parts out into space. So this whole series of things have been flung out into space. At the same time, it's also clearly beaming its emission in these directions. There's actually clearly a jet of material also being flung out in these directions, which is actually being illuminated. There's probably still nuclear burning going on in its centre, but it's the last stages of nuclear burning for this particular star, so it's not a main sequence star like the Sun just turning hydrogen into helium. It's long past that stage, and it really is about to blow its top entirely and, and really cease to exist as a star. But it won't be a supernova? It won't be a supernova. It's, it's a relatively low-mass star, so it's less than the eight or nine solar masses you need for the thing to blow up as a supernova, so it'll turn into one of these things called a planetary nebula eventually. There's a very recent piece of work, as I was sort of scanning through the literature, I found somebody had written a paper on this as recently as 2012. So this, this paper from uh, just earlier this year was look, taking another look at this pre-planetary nebula, this star coming to the end of its life, and what they did was they looked at a couple of pictures taken with the Hubble Space Telescope of the object, separated by about seven years. I think one was in 2002 and the other was in 2009. What you find is that, as you can see, all these little ripples that are now black and white and what that's an indication of is that those individual shells have actually moved on the time scale of just seven years. And from that, you can figure out actually how fast these little shells are moving out. And from that, you can kind of run the clock backwards and say, well, when would they have been flung off from the star in the first place? And when you do that, what you find is that this has been going on for about 4,000 years, this thing's been throwing out these shells, on a reasonably regular basis, about once a century. So what's happening is that this star is at these, at these final stages of its life, the star that's buried in the middle there is actually pulsating. Okay, it's actually going through these per thermal pulsations, and each time it goes through one of the ex expansion phases, it throws an outer layer of the star off. And so it throws a bit more star off and a bit more star off. And that's from this timing experiment, it's happening about once a century, once every 100 years. Which in terms of the timescales for evolution of a star, remember stars, you know, these low mass stars, they evolve over hundreds of millions, billions of years. To have something happening every 100 years is literally the blink of an eye for a star like this. So this is very rapid, this is the last gasps of a star. Astronomers of the day, and they didn't know what it was. And it took till much later until we actually uncovered the truth of what this object represented. The reason it's so bright is that the outer layers of the star 